Welcome everybody to 52 Living Ideas. This is the Bucky Inspired series that we do in collaboration with the Greater Philadelphia Thinking Society. I am honored today to have Casey House. I looked through his website and I was completely blown away by the work he has done. So he's here to tell us about his work, the format. He's going to make a presentation. Um, it might take between 40 minutes to one hour, 15 minutes. Please keep track of all the questions that you have, all the comments that you have. We'll have plenty of time afterwards to go back and forth. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and Casey, the floor is all yours. Thank you so much, Shrikant. And thank you, Kirby, for introducing me to this group. Um, I'm just going to share my screen and we can get started. Can you all see this? Yes. Yes. Great. So today I'll be giving an overview of Synergetics University, which is a project I've been working on for the last five years. And it's something that I think is of utmost importance as we face new and more threatening challenges of our own oversight as a species. So what I'll be giving here is kind of a basic overview of the work and uh, get into more of why it, I'm inspired to do it. So Synergetics University is a four-part education system that gives people the tools and awareness that is needed to create a world that works for everybody. The four offerings form a stable tetrahedron of learning and the prime volume and they are the prime volume of the greater initiative to build a more considerate world. And the four spheres of sinew are an educational educational art that brings the beautiful bridges a beautiful and youthful uh, work into like a modern context. And this would include posters and infographics, which I've made hundreds of. These are just. Uh, some of the graphics I've made and over the last few years regarding synergetics and also making merchandise like shirts and other things to that bring it into a stylish kind of fun youthful context and brings uh, makes it visually compelling for people um the second offering of Sinew is a resource library that gives people access to open source royalty free assets and information that helps them learn more and share their insights. And I've created downloadable PNGs and vector graphics as well as put together lists of resources for people to learn and share more. At some point, I could see this being something that people can add to and that it can be like a decentralized element of content sharing. The next offering of Sinew is a textbook that is a curriculum on synergetics, design, science, and nature's principles, design principles. And I've been working on this part of Sinew for the, the longest out of all of the spheres. And I started this about seven years ago, and I'm currently finding ways to bring it to completion and get it published. And I'm working to include many of the expert voices in the field. And the people that I've learned from along the way, like Kirby and uh, David Kosky and Bonnie DeVarca, and bring us all together in a way that tells a comprehensive story of synergy. So the fourth sphere of sinew is an online course that basically turns the textbook into a learning module, learning a, a bunch of learning modules. And this will be a series of interviews, presentations, activities, and meetups that will help people onboard into this important work. The impetus for creating Synergetics University came from a few important considerations as I read Synergetics. Buckminster Fuller, or Bucky as we call him, emphasized the importance of ephemeralization or doing more with less and less until we can do everything with nothing. He saw us at, a, at the crossroads of utopia or oblivion, consuming the world to ashes and trash heaps, or living in a regenerative and considerate way that uses nature's design principles to create optimal health and life support on this planet. He proposed the shift of weaponry to livingry, livingry 
and the shift of spending all of our money, science, and resources on better ways to kill one another? What if we invested them into creating more life support and life opportunities for people to engage with? And I saw this, I saw these as very important considerations right now because of the immense ecological and social challenges that loom over our collective heads right now. So Bucky employed what he called comprehensive anticipatory design science and to address the design challenges that we face as humanity. He created the design science decade as a solution for meeting the needs of all life on earth. And this was five two-year phases that focused on different sectors of the human relationships. The world game was an exercise he created to gamify this process and get people in touch with what it would take to make the world work for 100% of humanity in the shortest time possible through spontaneous cooperation without ecological offense or the disadvantage of anyone. He envisioned what he called the geoscope, a giant globe that shows the movement of world resources and gives perspective to the relationships we're building and uses computer data to make informed decisions in those relationships with success being the most probable outcome. Again, I think this is all very useful in our modern world as we face all of these ecological challenges and our advancements in technology since Bucky was around would help bring it to life in beautiful ways, these solutions that he had of us being able to see the relationships we're building here on earth in tangible ways. And that, you know, I don't think he maybe even could have conceived of how, you know, AI right now and all of the different software that we have at our fingertips can really bring world data into uh, into our consideration in beautiful ways. So Bucky wrote many books that explored this theme from different lenses, from poetic economics and the history of seafaring to the rigorous geomet geometric accounting he does in his books, Synergetics 1 and 2. So these are Fuller's magnum opus, and they contain many answers for humanity. And they give a comprehensive outline of nature's design principles in the shape of space, as well as using these principles to design a world that works for everyone. I find them to be two of the most important books of our time, but they're going out of print and they're very hard for people to read. They're around 1400 pages together and they are full of run-on sentences that make complete sense to me, but for a lot of people, it's very hard to wrap their mind around or follow what he's trying to convey. So as these two books become increasingly hard to find in any library or bookstore, I feel it's important to create accessible new media and visually compelling artifacts that bring these important ideas to the forefront of humanity's consider consideration. So I want to bring people on a journey of discovering nature's design principles of nature's coordinate system. And at this point in the presentation, I'm just going to guide us through the importance of this work and how I see it being a great gift to humanity at this time. Um, Bucky saw nature as operating in perfect economy and consideration. Omnic consideration, he would say and saw the patterns and forms of nature to exhibit exquisite integrity. From fungi and sea creatures and pollens and viruses and algae and carbon and seashells, they all tell a story of integrity in Bucky's eyes. So Bucky created Synergetics as a model a book of models and modeling integrity principles of nature and identifying the simple whole number volumes that can account for the omnitransforming events in universe. 
So Bucky saw the universe as a complex of non-simultaneously partially over overlapping star events that are related to one another in omnitriangulated patterns of relationship. A polyhedral system where vertexes are considerable things or events and the edges are the lines of force, the gravity, the relationship between considerable things. So whether that's, you know, he called the tagline for synergetics is uh, an exploration in the geometry of thinking. And so to him, a thought is uh, an event, these star events, we can, we can overlay this over in anything we put our attention to these different events, whether that's uh, cells of my body or uh design considerations and building a building. We could overlay this in anything that we do. So synergy means be the behavior of whole systems unpredicted by the parts considered separately. Bucky gives the example of chrome, nickel, steel, and how the tensile strengths of the metals and the alloy add up to less than the actual tensile strength of the alloy, alloy meaning that the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Uh, I like to think of this like in regards to looking at cells in isolation, you would not be able to predict that the emergence of this personality that we call Casey, Casey is a synergetic process. Casey is a verb, a relationship between a trillion cells. And so in it, this, this is an example of a, uh, you would not be able to predict me just by looking at any one of my cells in isolation. So Bucky was really fascinated with generalized principles. And these are the always true uh, axioms that the universe operates in. And simple things such as a triangle being the most fundamental polygon, or when you have a polyhedron with an inside and an outside, the inside is concave, the outside is convex. There's And so in any unity, he says, unity is plural, because in, in any unity, in any system, there is an inside and an outside, and that in itself is two. Uh, he talked about... Uh, tetrahedroning as opposed to uh, squaring. We talk about, uh, I mean, triangling, not squaring, and tetrahedroning, not cubing. And this was because he saw the triangle as a fundamental archetypal image of integrity. And this is because any other shape, such as a square, will collapse under pressure. You, you press any of its vertexes and it will collapse unless it's triangulated, such as when you're building a frame, it will collapse unless you triangulate its sides. So you can see this in circle packing. Like if you were to take any wires and look down the wires of how they're packing together, you can see that any other sh any shape will collapse into triangulation and it's only when you get to six uh, uh unit size circles around one or six unit size circles that you have the ability to fit one one that exactly fits in between all of the rest to where they're all touching so this what this looks like in the generations of closest packing of circles is you get these greater and greater uh, frequency hexagons that grow out. In the closest packing of spheres moving, so you're no longer placing pennies next to one another, but you're now packing spheres together. When you have three uh, spheres together, you, you don't 
have uh, an inside and an outside yet. There's not a considerable thing there. Bucky says you can't have a, a triangle of zero height. And so the first considerable event that we can conceive of or witness is something with an inside and an outside, something that has a volume. And so when a fourth ball comes to nest with those three, it will naturally fall into the, the nest of the three and become stationary, locked in to where this uh, can no longer uh, roll around each other. And so the, Bucky saw this as the first polyhedron with an inside and an outside and saw it as a symbol of integrity as well because it's omnitriangulated. And also, just as we saw with the triangle uh, stabilizing the square, the tetrahedron stabilizes the cube. You, you, you need a tetrahedron inside the cube in order for it to not collapse. So as you continue packing spheres in this tetrahedral array, you start to notice that octahedrons appear out of nowhere. Uh, and and how the octahedron arises in the middle of these tetrahedrons you're forming. Uh, and it becomes apparent that tetrahedrons and octahedrons can create a fill all space to create what Bucky called the isotropic vector matrix or everywhere the same energy conditions. And this is important because it, Bucky saw this as a way to quantize experience, uh, like uh, the quantize the events in universe into these considerable packets of, of uh, information. So the, the A and the B, the tetrahedron and the octahedron break into what he called A and B modules. And those A and B modules could then be the volumetric accounting for all other polyhedra that arise in universe. Uh, all other forms, all other relationships can be quantized into this uh, very, this finite accounting of events in universe. And so this isotropic vector matrix is this ominous surrounding matrix of closest packed events. The isotropic vector matrix and the cube octahedron. So as you start packing those tetrahedra and octahedra, all of a sudden you realize not only did octahedra arrive out of thin air, but you also can find cube octahedrons or what Bucky called the vector equilibrium because all of its surface vectors are equal to that of the vectors radiating from the end, the central ball outwards. So you can see that here in the closest packing of spheres, every vertex of the cube octahedron lays at the center of a sphere. And each of those vertexes is equidistant from the ball that lies at the, the sphere that lies at the center of the cube octahedron. And these will continue to pack out. This is the the closest packing of spheres and will continue to pack out in these hexagonal uh made like fields that we saw same with the hexagons that we saw growing in the circle packing you're having that and we are the center uh, ball in this as bucky would say we are the me ball looking out at this integrity cosmos and so these this Integrity Cosmos has these fundamental design principles that once we come into touch with them, we can start act, the, applying them in ways that uh, affect great change on behalf of the whole system. Uh, Bucky saw this as trim tabs and we can act as trim tabs. A trim tab is a, a little tab on a rudder of a plane or a ship that steers the whole ship. So this tiny little thing in a system is affecting great change, affecting the whole trajectory of the, the system. And so we as trim tabs 
can apply design principles to affect great change within the systems that we're inhabiting, whether that's a system that we're looking to create like Synergetics University, or we're looking at government, or we're looking at a building we wanna make, we can apply these fundamental design principles of integrity to achieve results that we're wanting. And so with Synergetics University, I wanna look at the work of many different trim tabs in the field, the constellation of trim tabs throughout history, going back to Lawrence Stower and Paolo Uccelli and uh, Uccello and Durer, and all the way back into Babylonian tablets and uh, Egyptian uh, writing. And how, how can we glean this search for nature's design principles throughout history? Because the, for since time immemorial, we've been trying to understand these ways to create more life support using less resources. And so Bucky used these design principles to create things like the geodesic dome and to create uh, the systems. And it, it's not even that he invented the geodesic dome, it's that he brought forth the science of understanding how it's uh how it's exhibiting uh integrity patterns and uh, alexander graham bell the inventor of the telephone uh also built tetrahedral kites uh that use these principles to uh, create novel artifacts another example of how these design principles can influence humanity is uh, what Bucky called tensegrity. And it cascaded through uh, history, uh, but Bucky was uh, termed it tensegrity by joining the two words tensional integrity. And rather than building systems that are founded on compression, like putting bricks on top of one another, you're, act you're building systems that are in dynamic tension. So their tensional forces are balancing their compression forces. And in building in such a way, it makes it to where you, any effect of one, the, the whole system carries the weight rather than any isolated part carrying all of the, the weight of the system. So Tensegrity was like first exhibited by a avant-garde artist named Carly Johansson's. And he, uh, he didn't, he, these were more like sculptures that he made. And it wasn't until Kenneth Snelson that, who was one of Buckminster Fuller's students that uh, he, developed the deeper aspects of uh, like explored this a little more through sculpture and he brought that to Bucky and Bucky became uh, fascinated with it and developed it into what we know as tensegrity. So this cascaded into the work of Don Ingber and his study of cellular tensegrity and how biological systems uh, have this biotensegrity and and then the exploration of fascia as biological tech, uh, tensegrity and Tom Meyer's work with anatomy trains and how our skeletons are held in dynamic tension by our fascia and our sinew. And so I like to make this, uh, I, I in creating Synergetics University, I came up with the the little tag sinew, this sin synergetics university, sinew, the sinew that holds up synergetics in a modern context. So I thought that was a playful little connection. And so this also cascades into things like C60, which was named Buckminster Fullerene because of the inspiration that Bucky had to look to nature for these fundamental design principles. And C60 is a uh, allotrope of carbon that is was discovered that has the form of a truncated icosahedron or a soccer ball. 
And so these explorations of geometry is showing us that there's these fundamental designs that are being expressed at in a multitude of ways that can be applied to make such things as graphene or carbon nanotubes and what that means for our technological advances in regards to working with nature in these ways. Also, the work of Casper and Klug in the study of viral uh, icosahedral, icosahedral symmetry and viruses. And what does this mean in regards to understanding these integrity principles and applying them in novel ways to uh, not battle nature, not fight nature, but work with nature to understand the deeper messages of these messengers of uh, uh, our own um, Im immune response and our own biological interactions with our biosphere. And uh, so this also looks like looking to our DNA and the tenfold symmetry of our the fivefold symmetry of our DNA and how we can use the models that we see in synergetics as overlays and understanding how to best view our biology and our biology within the context of nature. And so there's these really cool organizations like Terrapin Bright Green that does amazing uh, PDFs uh, that are free uh, about biophilic design and biomimicry, which is looking to nature for these design answers in design and mimicking the integrity principles that we already see in use by nature. So this is uh, the art of Umer Zia, and he was uh, in the design science studio with me and Steven and a few other, like, uh, and a bunch of other people that were in the design science studio. And his amazing art is incredible. You should check him out. He's also working uh, to do something he calls Nature Gadget, which is uh, bio biomimicry and designing based on nature. But how do we look to this ancient way of observing nature and being at one with the rhythms of nature and bring it into a modern context to design a world that works for everybody and to act as participants in this integrity system that is nature. We are nature. So how do we act as considerate nodes in that relationship of universe? So if you want to learn more about all of this and get in touch and provide feedback or share ideas, uh, I've created, uh, I've added this to my portfolio on my website. It's one of multiple projects I've seemed to take on at once. And I am currently uh, looking for ways to publish and get this out. Uh, to not feel so uh, overwhelmed by the amount of work that this is, because this this is a, a big undertaking for one person. So, and in this geometry of relationships, this study of relationships, I want to build relationships, and I want to have this to be something that is more than just my own echo chamber of thoughts about Bucky's work, but actually gives a comprehensive perspective of synergetics as it's uh, advanced and grown since Bucky died. And so, yeah, thank you so much for receiving my presentation. And I hope you took something from it. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Casey. Uh, that was amazing. That was amazing. Folks, I uh, would love your questions or comments. Uh, you can do either questions or comments together. You're, you're welcome to do that. Go ahead and type an exclamation mark uh, in the chat or raise your hand in Zoom in order to make comments or ask questions. We'll start with people who are uh, familiar with uh, Buckminster Fuller, and then we will expand to everybody else. So we're going to give me just a second. I'm going to unmute everybody here. Okay. Uh, we're going to start with Kirby. 
Kirby, go ahead and please take your time. Uh, Kirby, can you go ahead and unmute? Oh, just a second, my, my mistake. I think two of us tried to do it together. Uh, go ahead, Kirby. Okay, yep, works now. I have not ever seen this presentation, not this particular one. I've seen Casey present about Sinew a few times, but this exceeded all my expectations in terms of um, production values. You're really, really good at that. That's one of the best uh, slideshows, if I can call it that. I mean, things do slide. Uh, animation. I mean, I've seen a lot of PowerPoints. I'm like a geek. I go to conferences. You're one of the top 10 there that I've ever seen, I would say. So you're already like keynote caliber. Um, I'm very excited by all this. I wonder, I guess as a question, I'll put it this way. I very much respect your want, wanting to have a, a bound volume like a text, but when I see all this screen stuff and the interactivity of it and everything, I mean, wouldn't you want your main corpus to sort of stay in the interactive computerized sort of like I'm torn the same way. How much time do I want to devote to print media? And I guess for me, I kind of decided early on because I was really into hypertext before it really hit. Like in the 80s, I was grabbing people by the lapels and like hypertext, hypertext. And they're like, what are you talking about? And so when it hit, when we finally got the web, I was like, this is the medium for me. I want to do all my future writing on the web because I can do hyperlinks. I can connect to stuff and books are just kind of dead there. So I'm wondering, I guess, I guess my question is, do you really want a hard copy book to mean your main product or would that more be ancillary? And you're already way ahead of where maybe you think you are. Like you're already there. You've already done all the work. I don't know how much more you really need to do with what I've seen, right? If you just retire now, you, you already get, I know you can't retire. You got, you got to stay alive and stuff, but still. I, I God, totally God. I totally agree, Kirby. And, uh, you know, I, and also I, for one, absolutely love print media. There's a, there's a soft place in my heart for holding a book and being able to like, I don't think that'll ever leave me. And so uh, while I, I do agree that I want the major, the, the real living aspect of this to be a digital uh, medium. I'm a crazy person, I guess, and try to take it all on and just, uh, do all of it. <laughs> so there's this, uh, there's this feeling of like, I, I have had my trepidations about print media and it's kind of going out of phase, but I think there are people in the world that can, that I, I, for one, you know, synergetics one and two, just holding them and reading. I can't read it online. I can't go through it in the same way. There's there's a there's something that happens when you're holding it. And so I do want it to be ancillary, almost like the people who want to go deeper and uh, understand it on a deeper level can go to the textbook. And for the people who want to keep it uh, flowing and actually be up to date with like the refresh of what people are adding to this living system, then they go to the digital. Thank you. Uh, Kirby, may I ask you a question? Okay. Um, you know, many, many people watch these videos afterwards. Um, Kirby, you have been in the Bucky world for a long time. So you've got a perspective on all the work that is going on. What would you say is the place of Casey's work? What, If you wanted to describe Casey's work to somebody who is not familiar with the entire corpus of the work that people are doing. What is what has Casey done? Can you go ahead and talk a little well, bit? I think because <clears throat> Synergetics has not found a niche because people have always struggled with, you know, like Casey says, it's hard to read. It's not, he's one of the first, I would say, um, post Bucky pioneers to really dive in. Like I've seen a lot more of his posters than just what we just saw. And he's willing to get down into the, the modules like that A and the B modules that he was showing us. There's also a T, E, and S module. I only realized recently they spelled beast, which is easy to remember. 
anyway, I would say he's um, the best graphic artist to tackle the internal intricacies of synergetics and not just sort of float on the surface. He like really gets deep into it. And we're very lucky in that way because his aesthetic sense and skills are pretty really high. So it's exciting, it's exciting. I wanna go to movies, I want animation, but it's not either or. Like this book doesn't have to be exclusive. Like all, all of it, I agree, all of it. We should do all of it. Anyway, Casey's really good at the at the geometry. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Kirby. Really appreciate that. Uh, next up is going to be Chini. Folks, go ahead and type an exclamation mark to make your comments or ask any questions. Uh, Chini, go ahead. Casey, it's, it's amazing what you're doing. And I'd like to hear the story of how you got interested in, in Bucky Fuller. Um, so few in your generation even know who yeah. he is. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'd, I'd heard. Uh... I'd heard of him for quite a few years, just in my uh, exposure to geodesic domes and helping to build them. Uh, I just put together a few with people and, uh, and, but, and I had always had an interest in geometry, uh, although I kind of went down these new age paths of it, of kind of the more esoteric kind of explorations of it. And it wasn't until I had a, des a graphic design client uh, mention Synergetics to me. He actually gave me the book. He was like, I think you'd really like this book. And, I'll, and at first I looked at it, I was just like, that's quite the book. You know, I don't know. I don't know if I'll like actually dive into this, but I started reading it and it's the only book uh, here. Let me grab it real quick. So it's the only book I've ever had where I went through the whole thing and took notes through the whole thing and underlined passages and uh, made un like through the whole, both, both books. I've never done that with like any other thing in my life. Uh, and I just had this immense feeling in me that this is a key to my, not only my life, but like the something big on behalf of everyone. And I really love Bucky's perspective of, you know, if you see a, a job, it's yours. If you see an, if you see a place that needs tending in universe, that's your job, <laughs> you know? So it's like, I uh, kind of took that to heart. And for some reason, I, I was in circumstances where this, my, my design clients were like flowing right. And I had enough free time to just like pour myself into it to where I was, I literally spent probably 10 to 12 hours a day making a graphic a day about synergetics for a full year. And, uh, and it was that rigorous study of every single day being in it that uh, I think I'm now able to speak it as like my own inner language. I'm able to like overlay it over many different avenues of my life. And, uh, oh, actually, but the way it all started was the Buckminster Fuller Challenge. Uh, the reason why I even embarked on making Synergetics University, and well, it was just a textbook at that time, and this was like 2016 uh, or 17, and uh, I applied to the Buckminster Fuller Challenge with the idea of making a textbook regarding Bucky's work. And even though I didn't get the, I didn't get the, I didn't win, I still had this, the the impulse was already living in me. And so it kind of just like didn't stop for seven years now. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Great question, uh, Jeannie. Next up is going to be uh, Stephen, Richard, and Joe. Stephen. Thanks. Um, yeah, I just wanted to... Um, just say, I, I just loved being with Casey in the design science studio, the first cohort. Um, we were in the same pod together. And um, I was just really, really inspired by Casey's work. Um, the question that comes up for me then is how do you spread the idea? Like, so the, 
there's one thing to have the textbook, but there's the other thing to have the community, like the actual university of, of people coming around this. And that's kind of why I'm like, can we use existing tools? And, and um, I just reached out today with, there's a thing called Substack, and it seems to be a place where writers are gathering to share ideas. And uh, I just realized TrimTab as a publication was still available. So I just grabbed it on Friday and started building something. Um, would that be a, a good way to start disseminating maybe a little piecemeal um, bits of your, your textbook as it grows? Um, in yeah, you know, I've, I've had curiosities of how to release this and how to go about uh, offering this in, in stages. And um, one, one challenge of mine has been a digital overload. I feel the amount of time that I, so just to give context, this is one very large project of probably three or four very large projects I have on my plate. And, and so in that, with that, I just in this project have multiple different communities that uh, are exploring things in different email lists and different meetups and different things that it's hard for me to track. I feel a bit overwhelmed with the amount of data that I'm tracking to where more more things to submit to and 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 communicate in and 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 calendar feels a lot for me to understand how to go about and that's a big part of why I want to build relationships is like so I don't have to do this alone in a way of like tracking all of the data because the data of synergetics is a lot in itself and then the data of the relationships that come from synergetics is a whole other synergy <laughs> so um I, I and I love your you as a person, Stephen. And so, if you have a trajectory that you see as like helpful or like what you feel inspired uh, to help in your way, I I trust your uh, your considerate way, and we'll we'll yeah we'll be in co yeah. contact about all that. Yeah, thank you. Um, just um, as a side note, uh, we already have 37 subscribers in, in a few days. Um, so it seems to be um, a, a great avenue for actually collecting the different groups that are already affiliated with Buckminster Fuller Institute to start figuring out how we actually facilitate the collaboration together. And I personally, I'd love to be, you know, one of the helpers in your project. So I, also to add to that, I've been in, uh, you know, George Rebellion and uh, it came in Barbara Mertz. They came to visit me here in Ashland. They're, they're two of the three board members of BFI right now. And George stayed with me for a few days and uh, made suggestions as to like how uh, we can apply uh, apply this in new novel ways that is yet to be like determined what that looks like but i am like looking to build relationships with people like bfi which i've you know done work with on and off for <coughs> years now, so uh, thank you uh casey could you do one thing could you put what's the best way for people to contact you in the chat so uh if anybody wants to contact you about any kind of collaboration that they can do that uh next up uh, thank you thank you casey and a uh, great point, um, uh, Stephen. Next up is Richard. Richard. No, yes. <laughs> thank you, and and thank you to to Casey. That that was an incredible sort of presentation. And <clears throat> to Freekant's question about where should it be, or what, how we, it could be uh, uh, advanced. I would say that it should be University 101 in all universities around the world. Uh, and uh, and that kind of, I've got a couple of things that I wanted to say, but one connects to 
my university is that I was a professor of social work at for many years, University of Calgary and in Alberta, Canada. Um, they, they had a vision uh, several years ago to advance entrepreneurship throughout the entire university. Um, and the organization that I helped develop at the university called Living Works Education uh, became its poster child. Uh, although the focus was on suicide prevention. Now the university has adopted a new vision and it's, they're calling it a quantum city vision. And I'm just wondering whether or not I might be able to find some contacts that would see something like what you're doing to be a integral part of advancing something called Qu quantum city. Um, so that's one thing that's in my mind. The other is that, and it connects with Stephen. Stephen put out a message um, <clears throat> yesterday, I believe it was, that with respect to the trim tab uh, initiative that he's he's looking at, and he asked everybody to um, think about joining an event uh, in the near future and to bring one word. <laughs> And the one word that popped into my mind almost immediately was applied. And, and the reason it did is because the suicide prevention work that we've been involved in has a program called Applied Suicide Intervention Skills Training. And, and we did that to try and put an emphasis on applied versus awareness or understanding, to move mm. it into action. And this morning, for some reason, I do not know why I did it, but I went to uh, a visit to An Anwar Dahl, uh, Dill's Humans in the Universe, which was the very last book that, that uh, Fuller published, uh, along with Anwar as a co. And there's an interview in there uh, between Anwar Dill and Bucky. I'm talking about his experience with Einstein and the whole experience of him meeting with Einstein and Einstein saying, yes, young man, you can uh, <clears throat> publish my book. But one of the things that really caught me, and I think it might apply here in terms of you, what you want to do, and, and that is to stay focused on the applied part. And here's perhaps the reason why you should be doing that. Uh, if I might just read this little clip for a minute. Uh, <clears throat> Fuller is saying to Dill, he says, I will never forget the gentle way in which Einstein said to me, this chapter about Mrs. Murphy, young man, you amaze me. I cannot conceive of anything I have ever done having the slightest practical application. I have explored hoping that what I find what I find might be useful to astrophysicists, to cosmologists, but practical applications are not anticipated. I think what Fuller did was took that so seriously that he wanted to find practical applications for everything that, that he thought about in terms of uh, Einstein's work and his own work. And I think that's what you are. You're you're uh, a discipline uh, or disciple in regards to practical applications. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's uh, if you put that little phrase into your head uh, and woke up with it every morning, saying "apply, apply, apply," um, and we can get it catched on fire. <laughs> so that there's many of these conceptual realizations that Fuller talks about, not creativity, but conceptual realizations that are brought into applied practice. So congratulations, I, I, I so um, appreciate what, what you're doing. And, and I know how hard it is. It's, and so many of us that have been around Fuller for a few years, Mine goes back to the 1979, 80, just when Synergetics came out. And I spent 29 years in my university 
fighting all the way uh, to trying to bring these ideas in. And I was mostly labeled an outlaw, a crazy. Uh, <laughs> but I have a lot of students who have written papers that after they studied it, much like you did synergetics, they found the practical way they could use it in their graduate work or their their practice work after graduation. Thank you. So, yeah, in regards to that, uh, I totally agree. And this is why I think Bucky's emphasis of modelability is really important. You know, he spoke about how science has gotten to where <clears throat> people just forfeit their involvement in it because it's so abstract and so theoretical and so lost in equations that people have no connection to what our sciences are even pointing us to. We have, we have something pointing, but we don't, we, we can't like, we, nobody can understand the language in which it's described. And so people just don't even involve themselves in nature's coordinating. And so this was why he, he found it so important that we find simple ways to model nature's integrity patterns so that we can apply them in novel ways in anything that we design. And so I want to be able to create easy ways for... Or, easy ways for people to onboard into that and understand that and then be I don't I don't even fully understand what it means yet and I don't understand what it is all leading to but I do trust that it's uncovered a deeper knowing in myself of my placement within the cosmos and my uh, ability to articulate and design experiences that are reaching towards the results that I know my heart is knows is possible uh so i think in that regard i you know i don't know the the ways to apply it that will work for you i know the ways that i, I can apply it that will work for me and by giving you the tools to understand the ways that you can discover how it will work for you we can work together to create a wor world that works for all of us Wonderful. Kirby, did you have a comment? No. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, let me go ahead and mute. Okay. Um, Casey, what I'm going to do is that I want people to see some of the designs on your website because it actually shows what is there. So please give us, uh, folks, I'm just going to share some, share this. Can you see it? Okay. This is the design tab and I'm just going to scroll through it. Okay. Oh no, that looks bad on, okay. My website looks like it's having issues there, but um, so. I just want to scroll through it. So people see the, is is that okay? Is yeah. It? So one, one thing that uh, you'll find in a lot of my infographics is I utilize phi uh, and pi and uh, irrational numbers and Bucky actually aboard irrational numbers and said that nature wasn't working in infinite decimals. Nature always resolves in these uh, very finite energy patterns that you can observe a beginning and an ending. There is no trailing decimal point after a bubble that nature creates. And so uh, I chose to, you know, Arthur Loeb has a, a whole part in Synergetics where he talks about Phi and how, you know, he still utilizes it as well in his uh, exploration of this. And yeah, so. Wonderful. I just wanted people to see the, the range of things uh, that, that you've done. Uh, so wonderful. Thank you. Um, uh, folks, go ahead and type an exclamation mark uh, if you have a question or have a comment. We're going to go with uh, Joe, followed by Mike next. Joe. Hi, Casey. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, I think, you know, one of the things actually CJ had thought about is how to bring this to the masses, and I think you're, you're uh, doing the same. Uh, so uh, it's very much appreciated. Uh, I have a lot of questions for you, actually, but I would like to start with, uh, you mentioned you had three or four big projects. Mm -hmm. uh, I was wondering if you could expand on those uh, and then I have some follow-up maybe questions from there, but 
uh, that would be my first question. I do. I know there are other people in line as well, but yeah. I do have problems. So okay. uh, one of my other big projects that I've undertaken is a YouTube channel uh, called Ancient Presence, and it's dedicated to educating people about the ancient world. I've traveled to over 150 ancient archaeological sites around the world and documented them through photo and video and create educational videos with a friend of mine about where we've seen. Um, so that's that is a whole project in itself. And then uh, I'm a musician and I have a uh, few albums that I'm working on. Uh, and so that's a whole other project. I'm also a graphic designer and web, web designer. And so I do client work with that. And so that's sort of another avenue that I, uh, spend a lot of time in um, and uh, I've also been getting more and more into video work and doing uh, kind of freelance video and drone uh, video for people. Uh, I'm a licensed drone pilot so that's another avenue uh, project of mine. So Wonderful it, it you know this is uh, what comprehensivism is all about. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Joe, would you like one more question before we go to Mike and Rupali? Uh, go ahead and unmute yourself, Joe. Yeah, I was talking. I'm sorry about that. Um, yeah, no, and that is what comprehensivism is all about. Thank you. Uh, the one thing I want to build on is a little bit what Richard talked about is about the applied uh, part of this. Um, one of the things that uh, I always felt is like Buckman circle was many times that he's ahead of the time. Uh, and I think that his time is kind of coming. Uh, and uh, so I was wondering, you know, and I don't want to, I don't, you know, it can be a modeled for everything, as you mentioned, it's not necessarily one specific area. Uh, however, I was wondering if there is a specific area that you see uh, Buckminster Fuller's ideas, uh, maybe uh where they actually will have more traction i mean they have it in architecture already but uh one of the areas that um and and watching stroopy's uh, presentation he brought up uh he is actually doing some work in ai uh, and i think that that's an area that actually it, there may be a lot of possibilities but i was just wondering if there's a particular area that you see uh, uh synergetics university maybe kind of facilitating uh, the growth of Bucky's ideas. Oh, well, okay. So there's two different things there. I, I feel like, yeah, sorry. I feel like I, the way that I see Bucky's work most being most influential, for some reason, the thing that comes to mind to me is viro virology and understanding viruses. And, uh, I don't know why, uh, but to me, it just seems like there's some keys uh, there. Uh, so that that's one thing that I, I keep coming back to is my curiosity about that. Um, there's also, I think, um, I, I really like the studies uh, being done with uh, C60 and, 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 carbon uh, graphene. Uh, I, I like C6, I think C6, C60 and uh, ways to use it as uh, advancements in solar and uh, in medicine and all of these different ways to apply it uh, can be really helpful. Um, but I also, I've been very curious about how synergetics applies to relationships, to psychology, how can how can I view the relationships of events of in my life and put them into a context that helps me heal childhood trauma? <laughs> you know, it's like how do uh, we use these integrity patterns to inspire people out of suicide? You know, uh, the suicide prevention thing. Uh, like, you know, I think it's 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 churning in me in a way that I I've started to see it everywhere in a way that I don't 
see a place in universe that won't be influenced in our design considerations uh, if they are taken seriously and undertaken by humanity. Um, how I see Synergetics University uh, lending itself to the advancement of Synergetics, I think my sole focus in all of this has been creating beautiful bridges into it, not looking too much into uh, the future of how it's applied and, and how I can influence whatever. It's mostly just about translating. And I think that's a big part of what I'm here to do is distill down these bigger ideas into digestible infotainment that people can uh, actually take it on and do their things with it and bring it to their uh, area of expertise and apply it in novel ways that bring us out as a community rather than, you know, I, I don't have all the answers. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, next up is going to be Mike, uh, Rupali and Mona. Mike, go ahead. Okay, your comment about uh, virology uh, is, uh, inspired me to forget the rest of my questions and go down that rabbit hole if you if you're interested in pursuing that. Um, the, uh, the tetrahedron uh, as, um, as um, um, uh, our friend uh, Buckminster had it, uh, left, uh, didn't have a uh, continuity in an analytical way of combining tetrahedrons. Now for both virology and medical development, the protein folding uh, problem uh, is uh, is a continuous problem. Now um, uh, that is of uh, how you combine these. Now, um, Mr. Fuller used the Dymaxian approach to put that uh, together uh, as a way of combining tetrahedrons. Um, the, there's a, another name since you've had some international exposure, Herman Hacken has uh, applied some of this stuff to, uh, and he's still alive, unlike some of these other guys, uh, has applied some of that to laser excitation states and to how you handle multi-layer semiconductors. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, you get a continuous development so you can um, uh, analytically uh, trace through now, um, what Herman Hacken did is put these in uh, spherical coordinates and treated them as uh, rather than uh, uh, pyramids of uh, tetrahedrons. And uh, it, be it mapped into spherical coordinates, it becomes a spherical packing problem. Uh, now, you had on your website, you showed some of that spherical packing issues. Have uh, you uh, have you um, uh, taken that further? And uh, one more name I'll drop in uh, in dropping names. That's is, uh, let, let let Casey respond to this one. Uh, uh, let me finish that one thought, and then I'll go. I'll, uh, I'll I'll shut up and listen because I learn more listening than talking. Uh, the Cobusier. Uh, took the Dymaxion approach and brought it into Bauhaus. And uh, that became a German, uh, a, a European theory of architecture. Um, have uh, any of that uh, resonated with what you've been doing? Thank you, Mike. Uh, go ahead, Jason. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the question was, but I... Uh, How about, um, uh, Mike, uh, can you put in chat the name of this person uh, or you can just say uh, what what is Herman what what is the name I, I can respond to like the last part of that which is uh, uh yeah, Bau, Bauhaus and uh was kind of I wasn't really on my radar until Stephen uh Bao and uh he, he kind of brought it into my consideration but so I don't know a lot about uh, Bauhaus and that whole exploration but um uh you had said uh how how uh, i'm sorry i had a hard time tracking that's fine that's fine, that's fine. um I, 
Mike, could you go ahead and put the name of Herman and uh, like uh, Corbuse on in the chat so people can look it up? Thank you. Uh, next up, and it's very interesting that Bao goes is is the promoter of Bao House. Uh, so next up is uh, Rupali, Mona, Kirby, and Joe. Rupali. Wait, sorry, J Stephen Bao and Casey House together are Bao House. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> You know, all of these uh, names are like just uh, interesting from the point of view of architecture, the like Corbusier and Bauhaus and all of that. But Casey, this was a very nice presentation. Um, <clears throat> I have, um, I, I'm interested in learning more about your curriculum that you talked about earlier. Um, and um, also the domes that you have constructed, uh, how how big were they and uh, what was the purpose for making those domes and um, how, uh, how much, like what, what kind of um, cost uh, benefit did you find? I don't know if this fits in within today's context, but I'm curious. Casey, I want to just add something to um, what Rupali said. So this question about curriculum, it's actually very close to what we are doing. So the next meetup, two weeks from now, Rupali is going to be presenting the ideas, educational ideas of Montessori and um, and Bucky, comparing them. And then mm. next week, so between this meetup and Rupali's meetup, Kirby is going to be presenting synergetics for a 16-year-old or a six-year-old. He's try, trying to debate whether to targeted for six-year-olds or 16-year-olds. So that's that's the context, uh, just the bigger context of this one. Please go ahead, sir. So uh, that's something that I would be uh, interested uh, in attending, uh, that presentation on uh, both Kirby's and the one on uh, curriculum and Montessori. And uh, the curriculum that I've built out uh i've broken into I, I i have a whole graphic about it but i didn't include it in my presentation um i've broken it into 24 modules uh corresponding to the 24 a modules of the tetrahedron i like to visualize the, a lot of this in terms of the tetra volume uh, uh that way it maintains its uh integrity if you will and I, so I've outlined it as 24 modules that span from a Bucky biography all the way into uh, the deep geometry of it, uh, as well as biomimicry and uh, looking at it through diverse lenses, uh, such as like, you know, Kirby's work or Bonnie DeVarco's work. Uh, and um, also telling telling stories that uh, get out of the an analytics of it, get out of the deep um, science or like the rigorous science of it and get more into the feeling of it. And uh, so I, it, I don't have it all fleshed out yet. I have the outline of what the curriculum is, uh, but I've wanted to take basically all of all of Bucky's work and distill it into 24 modules uh synergetics being kind of the the main focus uh because i feel like that's what i know the most about and also i think is the most important aspect of all of his work thank you thank you casey next up is going to be mona kirby oh wait sorry uh, there was another aspect to that question uh which was my building of the geodesic domes and uh I've built like I've been a part of building like two of them in my life and then one of them was uh uh like a temporary dwelling uh small maybe like 16 feet diameter um and uh the other one was like for like a an event at a I was with a crew of people. I didn't. I didn't know what I was doing alone. I was helping other people put together these domes that they had. And so, 
I don't really know the the cost effectiveness of it, or I, I know that you know the insulation isn't the best on like these canvas domes, but you know there's uh, many reasons why it's a interesting avenue to go down in building structures because uh, you know and if you want to learn more about that or look into it more uh, here in Ashland where I'm at Ashland Oregon uh, there's a, a company called Pacific Domes and they specialize in making domes and making them affordable so uh, Rupali would you like to share your experience building um, these uh, domes in India If, if you want to sure uh, yeah i mean i don't have any pictures um but i can just share briefly that um, i was working with a structural engineer who had developed a material called ferrocrete and that's basically taking very fine um chicken mesh or uh, wire and uh enclosing that in concrete and so the concrete prefabricated pieces that you get are really thin, um, but they're very strong. And so now you combine this thin material with um, the structure of a dome, you can prefabricate those triangles, uh, put them up um, fairly easily, and then you can have a dome that can be used for, you know, you can use it as a as a house, you could use it as um, for something to, to store. Uh, and when, when we made um, water tanks, they were more spherical. So they were not uh, geodesic domes with triangles. They were more, the entire um, sphere was constructed with the chicken mesh. And, but the amount of volume you hold is greater than what you could do it. Like we've all known that now through all these meetups. Uh, so I'm not going to go into that, but um, you know the the movement inside the dome, uh, as opposed to in square dwellings or rectangular dwellings, is very different. Uh, the shape just lets you flow, and that's very different from being in a square shape. I think um, Casey talked about the inside and the outside uh, world, and that that just free, flows very freely through. Uh, you can just pop open a couple of triangles and there you have a nice opening and or letting light in or even the, the, the top piece that goes inside the door. You can play with so many different ideas, uh, letting the light in or just keeping it open or uh, depending on the, the use of the dome that you're going to make, it, there are a lot of possibilities. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rupali. Original idea was to have Rupali present on, uh, you know, the kind of building of the domes and what it feels like inside and from architect point of view. But, you know, uh, she's, you know, in addition to being an architect, she's an um, educator. So she, she's going to the first meetup that she's going to do is on education. Um, OK, next up is going to be Mona, uh, Kirby, Jeannie and Joe. Mona. Yes, hi. Um, I, I wanted to ask a question. I mean, first of all, I wanted to say I'm impressed with your presentation and I wanted to thank you. Um, but uh, my question, main question is regarding the audience that you sort of target. And um, I wanted to uh, mention also that I was particularly interested in the art aspect that you touched upon first. And I was wondering if that um, is one of the main sort of ways to reach people uh, who might not otherwise be uh, Bucky fans, <laughs> uh, because certainly um, there's the Bucky enthusiasts, but but then there's people who um, are resistant. And um, I guess that's where my question revolves around too. Yeah, for sure. I. I see the art and the merchandise being an uh, integral part of getting people in touch with all of this, because I think in order to get it into the deeper levels of our, of humanity's subconscious, we got to, we have to make it beautiful and it has to be this compelling uh, hip kind of thing of like, it has to come out of this 
uh, black and white book of like, uh, that's hard to read and come to life in a way that is youthful. And so I think my main target audience with it would be uh, younger people, young young designers, young uh, <clears throat> college students, high schoolers. Um, and my idea with the textbook even is to make it more of a coffee table book almost where you can open it up to any page and kind of get... Uh, easy to understand information from it. Um, a little of both, like a mixture between coffee table and textbook and uh, uh, an art book, you know? So that's that's one approach I have to making this more accessible is bringing it out of like, somebody doesn't even have to understand what it is, just making uh, compelling visual invitations into considering what our placement placement is amidst the universe and the cosmos. So Casey, I just want to follow up on this. I mean, one of the great insights that CJ had is the idea of four on-ramps that in order to grasp of what? four on-ramps, four different paths mm -hmm. to understanding synergetics. You know, he distinguished between the design one where you're actually building things, the geometry one, uh, the one of collaboration, kind of working together, and one of kind of holistic kind of thinking. Um, mm. You know, art, you know, adding art angle to the geometry of synergetics is very powerful because art touches people directly. It touches the intuitions of people. It touches the emotions of people. There is an aesthetic experience yeah. of, oh, this is living. This is living. And I have been boxed in, in this inert, inorganic things, mm -hmm. which is constraining my natural life. What this is doing is that this is kind of like how life is so it allows and all of that is not presented as an argument to prove people but they can actually see feel and intuit that and that i think is is a tremendously powerful thing and that's one of the things that i see uh you doing uh, would you like to comment on on this yeah so i think <clears throat> that that is a an important okay so how do i say this um i i, I so bucky framed it in this way of if he was working on a design and that result wasn't beautiful he knew he went wrong somewhere. And so in that regard, it's like, how, how, do I, how do I bring these important issues and challenges and frame them in a way that builds relationships, uh, people can build relationships to the problems as design challenges rather than here to haunt us. You know, it's like uh, Bucky said, as we solve these design challenges were faced with greater challenges. And so these are refining our uh, ability to create beauty. And I think, I think for me, it has become this uh, process of um, building a relationship with, and then uh, building relationships and enacting these patterns of integrity that spontaneously uh, generates more life support. So it's like, I don't even have to understand how it's being applied, but it's like, I understand fundamental principles enough to be able to spontaneously meet this moment in beauty. And I, I think that's what the art does for people is it confronts them with the fact that there's beauty to be discovered and beauty here are surrounding us and that they are a part of that beauty and that there's an integrity in in 
process right now and they're a part of that process and so how how to create compelling media not just images but uh, uh, memes and all the things that kids love these days you know whether that's like music or uh videos how to create these beautiful invitations into a world of consideration where we are all in relationship and uh, all being considered under this umbrella of uh, nature's design principles. Beautifully put. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is going to be Kirby, Cheney, and Joe. Kirby. Okay. I've sort of been taking notes and accumulating some comments as we roll through this. So I'm going to be addressing a couple things that were said a while back by this time, but like, I'm kind of a PR guy in my own head, I guess. I'm trying to like manage because I put a lot of eggs in this basket myself. It's like the public interface to synergetics and so on. I think people get scared that Bucky's like too far out when you say things like he doesn't believe in pie or phi. Like, what do you mean he doesn't believe in pie or phi? And I think, you know, it's an ancient discussion in Western civilization and I'm sure anyone who thinks about it is nature ultimately discrete and digital and separate or is there a continuum and fuller always says like there's no solids because if you zoom in on any actual object it always is permeable to light or to whatever the idea of a hermetically sealed where there's absolutely a continuum with absolutely no way that there's any like space in between anything have we ever encountered that physically no we have not so he comes down on the discrete side, but it's not like he doesn't use irrational numbers the way we think of them, like the second root of two and numbers with lots of decimal points, dot, dot, dot. When I write about the E and the T module, I specialize in doing my computations out to 200, 300 digits just to counter this image that in synergetics, we round everything off in a stupid way. No, you can go as, but it's not irrational because computers don't know anything about irrational. This idea of numbers that have infinite digits, when have you ever used one? No one's ever computed with an irrational number. They just write a symbol. Anyway, there's that. So there's that point. Another point, I feel like I talked with CJ about this quite a bit. We talked about memory palaces and Matteo Ricci going to China with this idea that you can put something in your head that's going to help you remember everything that's important. It's a whole long tradition, not just oratory and rhetoric, but, you know, managers before we had computers were working hard on organizing their heads. And I think synergetics first and foremost in Fuller's own mind. And he said this directly is to help bridge what we call the CP snow chasm and CP snow wrote about this divide emerging between the humanities on the one side and the liberal arts and the engineering and the STEM, right? That it was dividing into two cultures and we needed a bridge and synergetics is that bridge or is trying to be a bridge in that regard between the humanities and STEM. And I'm kind of more on the humanities side myself and I'm kind of anchoring synergetics in the humanities. I take it as a philosophy. I ask students to read Love's Body by Norman O'Brown. I'm really into Freudian stuff. I'm really into the collective unconscious. That's kind of my background, much more so than some kind of bridge engineer or something like that. And I think what Fuller does is he bridges that chasm by giving humanities people such as myself a right brain sort of uh, an injection where it fires up our ability to imagine way more so that we can have these reveries and daydreams that take us between like virology and C60 and nanotubes, also called bucky tubes. We can drift around in the world of the sciences, crystallography fluently in our imaginations, way more than they let us when they just hit us with all this left brain math and coordinate systems and all this stuff. That's what turns people off so much in this art that Casey's doing. You can see how you can daydream in this stuff. This can become a new fluency for you. The last thing I'll say is I don't buy the thesis that Fuller got his dome through the Bauhaus. I know about that zip tie documentary. I've seen thoughts about that and the Black Mountain Connection. I know about that. 
but he didn't get his IVM from Alexander Graham Bell either. It's going back to first principles, which he was doing, and we can document that. In the 1920s, he was doing this. He was thinking in, about spheres and taking notes and stuff. It's a no-brainer for me to see that Fuller came up with that dome without influence from Bowersfeld and the Zeiss dome and all that, which I do know about. I just don't draw that line. I think the Bauhaus people are trying to get credit where they don't deserve any right now. Also, Haken, he was, Fuller was not happy that Haken took that term synergetics and decided to make that the title of his book and to go on in that direction. And when I came to Wikipedia, I found a lot of confusion between Haken synergetics and Fuller's. And it was my mission to put that disambiguation and make sure Fuller's synergetics had its own entry in Wikipedia and is not confused with Haken synergetics, which I don't think should be considered the same. And when I go on academia, Dot com or dot edu, whatever it is, I find all these Russian scholars over the past few decades that when they write about synergetics, they're always writing about Haken synergetics. It's kind of my mission to contact them and say, you know, there's this whole other thing called synergetics and it's not Haken synergetics. I'm sorry. So I'm, you know, a little bit militant in that regard. I'm not just going to let synergetics get diffused out into this other world uh, of, of People's, I think the unit volume tetrahedron and that he had something new to say about polyhedrons is the core of synergetics and you cannot drop that out. And I kind of have a beef with the boomers who are like, oh, no, we don't want to talk about that. We want to talk about, you know, apply has got to me a memory palace. You got to be able to think better. And synergetics does that. And applications should include that. Just having a better head where you can dream about science fluently that's the application everything else is secondary who i love that my speech wonderful thank you thank you kirby thank you uh next up is going to be genie maritza and joe genie um i wanted to say some things that really don't hang together because i don't really have a good answer i think you're almost on a you know, you're further along than I could uh, imagine myself. But, um, you know, as far as people will naturally use a tool that's available. And so I think that's what we're talking about here, a, a tool for people. And um, I think didn't Fuller say something about, you know, if you build a bridge, people will, you know, start using the bridge instead of climbing down the ravine and climbing up the other side. So uh, I think that's a good thing. I think a bad thing is that I'm not even sure geometry is even taught in school anymore. But maybe that could be a good thing if we could substitute in, you know, a new geometry using tetrahedrons and make it different. Make it take math, you know, geometry out of math maybe and put it into something more broad, you know, as as a curriculum because I, I think it you know it really does start very young and there were a lot of people that tried to make toys and stuff that would you know start very young kids on uh on that path and then I wanted to say yeah oh oh yeah beautiful so um then another thing is you know the terminology and you know I remember when uh I saw a drink called Synergy. Now, Fuller didn't make up the word Synergy, but he definitely popularized it. And uh, I, I saw this drink and I mean, it was, it tasted good and everything, but I was just like, oh dear, you know, people have taken this word and they're using it, you know, as a product now. But, you know, that, that became pretty minor. I think it was kombucha or whatever, you know, to drink, but you know, now I see the word synergy on the gas station mm -hmm. and, I, you know, it, it just maybe kind of makes me sick. But then, you know, maybe it's a good thing because people are beginning to know the word synergy. And, you know, even they, they must be at least curious. What does it mean? And, you know, maybe it could be a good thing. That's what I'm just thinking. So mm -hmm. I, I think it's a, a kind of a zigzag path that maybe some of the things that are 
uh, Fuller has made a big impact on our our civilization, I think, and and some of it's very subtle. I mean, the the term of spaceship Earth definitely people have heard that and people think like that now. I I think that has happened in a certain way, but it's a zigzag path to kind of get there. Yeah, it's like a continual reorienting to our North Star, you know, as we're out here adrift as, you know, this collective humanity, we, you know, over time, you know, the solutions that worked 50 years ago today would be pointing at a different star for us. So we got to keep reorienting where, you know, those solutions worked then, but how do we bring uh, these things and into uh, a living uh, idea now. And so also in regards to something somebody said uh, earlier, like, you know, he was ahead of his time and he he himself talked about how uh, these idea, you know, ideas have a gestation period. You, you have, you know, this idea and architecture and it takes 50 years to get implemented. You know, and he talked about it's all based on the the speed at which those things are moving. This is the brilliance of like Bucky's brain and how he worked is he saw, you know, architecture because they're mo- the buildings are moving very slow, uh, take, you know, 50 years to see changes in architecture, but uh, cars because they move faster, uh, they're, they're, you have an idea with a car and the automobile, the changes you see in the automobile industry happen a lot faster. Jets and how quickly they travel, the advancements in them you know, will be a couple of years and, or even less. And so uh, how just ideas themselves have a, uh, a gestation period and you know the word synergy you know many people don't even c- connect that to bucky even though he uh is a pioneer of a lot of words like that and the same with like ephemeralization and dimaxion and and so like yeah uh, i think at the more that these ideas gestate in uh humanity's subconscious the more that will start you know Maybe there's a reason why synergy is being used more as a word, because, you know, on a deeper level, these ideas are bubbling in us. These uh, it's been it's been dormant in us for 40, 50 years. And now these ideas are ready to, to take form in a way that was not predictable. You know, Bucky couldn't have predicted their arising of synergetics as it is now. And uh, that's the beauty of it is synergy is the behavior of whole systems rather than his individual part. Bucky didn't have the answer. He, Bucky isn't uh, the living emanation of synergetics. Synergetics is this verb, is this living thing that uh, has a whole new meaning in this context of the challenges that we face right now. So Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is going to be Maritza, Joe, and Paul. Maritza. So I'm fairly new to your um, website, but I want to say your your resources tab is so impressive. Even just a little bit, I've seen it's... I highly recommend people checking that out. So if you go to the send you tab on my website and then click resources, the resource library, uh, I I love that. So Yeah, and there's, and now was this, there are, um, it looks like there's like sound bites directly uh, from synergetics uh, okay uh Maritza, can i put you in spot can you bring that up or share the screen on the yes. app so people can see what is there with me uh yes i can just a moment here um also there's a there's a link in here by the way for an entirely digital copy of um yeah synergetics which is and and the sound about i was scrolling through and these are actually pieces from the book itself so i if let me go back a second and if you go here i'm sorry i'm on windows today so if you go here there's like these little tags and you can just click for example on um you know vector equilibrium and what comes up is it didn't come up well now it's being misbehaving 
I just did this and it came up. Um, it's doing that. There you go. So it it's actually a little like clip from the, the book itself and a figure from the book itself, which I think is impressive. And you can double click on this, make it even bigger. Yeah. You can like really see the detail of the figure itself, which I think is so impressive. I, I'm, I'm kind of, like I said, I'm, I've only been on this a little bit and I'm blown away by the, the resources yeah. is, it's fantastic. This section, if I, I applaud your efforts, this is fantastic. Thank you. And yeah, and this is like, I see this kind of as the, the least common denominator of what I've invested in this. It's like, uh, this is the minimum viable product that I could provide in this regard. You know, uh, I think with more people adding to uh, this, you know, we could build this resource library out to you know, all I made all of these uh, PNGs and vector graphics free, like open source, like royalty free graphics that people can use in whatever way they want. And so I, my idea is to make it make the tools accessible so that then people can apply it to their own studies and their own education modules that they want to do on all of this. And to me, the amazing thing is if you're not super familiar with some of these shapes, when you click on the shape itself, you get you get a definition yeah. and it's not just any definition you're getting bucky's definition which is that's phenomenal and if it's not bucky you you have where it's yeah. coming from like you know some of your stuff is from amy edmondson and so it's this is fantastic i think this is really great thank you, you know? yeah and if you click on that synergetics resources there on the right the the uh right there yep uh this is a huge list oh, nice. that that I've put together. If anybody wants to learn about anything regarding synergetics, this is this is the guy with the digital copy of um, synergetics one and two online. Yeah, yeah, and so this is like it, the Kirby. many different avenues of exploring this here in this resource. Cool. Some of these uh, we've had the the pleasure of some of these um, people actually joining right. us, which is kind of awesome. Um, yeah. So now I will say, so as exciting as this is, I I am left wanting when I come here, you talk about four, like I, I would love more on, wait, where is it? This, is this it? No, no. Here. So here, it's such a tease. <laughs> you were just talking about it a little bit the four offerings for your university. And this is, so the online course, it's yeah. not clickable. And if yeah. I, so what it says somewhere in this website, I forget where there's, it says you have 24 modules for your online course. Yeah. Can you, can you tell us more? No, I'm sorry to put you on the spot. It's, it's the idea of um, like, do you have that sketched out? Do you know what that's gonna look like? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, the reason why I don't have it clickable yet is because I haven't gotten to the stage of building out the online course to the extent uh, that I feel is, it's ready. Um, you know, I do presentations like this, like what I just gave you guys, but uh, I have a whole curriculum of 24 modules, like I said earlier, that uh, covers everything from the Bucky biography to the deeper aspects of geometry and you know, also how it's applied through uh, uh, vir in virology or uh, different avenues of science. And so I have I have the curriculum sketched out in regards to what it's going to look like, and I have all the knowledge to fill it out. It's more a matter of uh, finding other people to provide a more diversified perspective of it. Can I, can I ask one one quick question? I, I see, and then I know she can't going to have better ones, but my one quick question to you is, what would be, what's the mission statement for these, these um, online courses? Uh, to provide a um, entry level course and understanding synergetics, design science, nature's design principles, 
the trim tabs that are currently working in the field and ways to apply all of this in uh, meaningful ways that create more life support on the planet using less resources. So that would be the, the kind of broad look at it. Uh, you know, I, I am in the works of talking with organizations like BFI about uh, what this would look like in regards to an ongoing educational process rather than just like this closed system of like an offering of like this is an online course and you can take that but it's like a weekly thing or a daily thing uh of educating uh regarding this and so i think in the immediate it looks like uh a course that people can sign up for or courses being taught at schools universities that uh brings people through this process of design science and uh, being able to uh, think in these synergetic ways. Thank you. Um, uh, Casey, I, I just want to say something. Don't feel bad about those courses not being there. You, you see, Maritza, is this is actually a good thing. That somebody is going is going there, clicking on everything, seeing everything that you've got, and say, "Oh, oh, oh, this is not there." <laughs> and the other thing to say is that actually this is the nature of building things out in a comprehensivist way, where you have kind of, you know, kind of placeholders. You know, this is going to come here, this is going to come here, and you work on whatever you can, and you take all the opportunities that you can as you build it out. And it is a good thing for people to say, hey, where is that course? Where is that course? And then people will say, you know what? I will help you do this, you know? I, so so it's, it's, all, it's all very, very good, uh, Casey. So thank you. Thank you so much. Also, we have, um, we have had other people present here along with similar concepts and such. So it's, a, it's fascinating to see some of the similarities. And it's so exciting that there's actually a few people working towards a similar yeah. goal. Stroopy being one of them, uh, I think Stroopy has presented with y'all, hasn't yes. he? Yes, yeah. she has several times. Um, and uh, Maritza, thank you very much for walking us through the resource section, because what happens is that uh, I think in addition to the presentation, having the design, having the resources shows people the scope of what, what, what Casey is doing. Uh, all right, next up is going to be uh, Joe, followed by Paul and Rupali. Joe. Yeah, I, so one of the things actually I was, you know, perusing that uh, same section, and I thought it was actually it was fantastic. Um, and one thing I was thinking about is even though we were, uh, it was brought up a little bit earlier, even the idea of like circle packing. Um, and uh, so one of the things that I thought about is uh, that had been brought up here in the past is this, how uh, some of Bucky's concepts actually is, uh, model the human brain even, uh, and circle packing being one of them. And actually Stroopy brought that up uh, as to how like actually neurons in the brain interact. Um, and that's exactly how uh, circle pack could be used to to uh, to model that to uh, optimize how uh, um, uh, how the neurons can uh, essentially uh, interact with one another. Um, but I was wondering, actually, that that thinking about that, have you put any like case studies related to that kind of work? Where neurology, um, neurology, or anything along any case studies in general that would actually be uh, helpful to see Bucky's work uh, applied uh, in a specific way, like kind of so that it was in a way that's kind of like, all right, well, now I'm seeing it in a case study um, and and seeing in neural networks had actually been brought up here uh, by multiple people. Uh, so in addition to Stroopy. Uh, so, and anyway, it was just one thought. Yeah. 
So my my mind immediately goes to decentralized networks like blockchain and uh, technology like that and how that's being used with AI and then how that bridges into neurology and how all of these systems, I think on a fundamental level are all connected in that, uh, you know, the, the more that we can understand distributed networks and tensegrity and how you know you apply force in one part of the system and it affects change in another part of the system and how you know, I haven't seen any direct case studies regarding neurology you know but I have read through some things in regards to how it's informing uh a solar solar panels has been the biggest thing that I uh, seen a lot of is like uh and so what I think is the more that these, and I, I've maybe said this already kind of like a on repeat throughout this presentation, is that the more that designers of all kinds understand these fundamental design principles, the more that they'll have answers in whatever field they're they're in, whether that's neurology or uh, solar or whatever, that anything operating here in universe is operating based on these uh fundamental design principles of nature and uh so um when i think you know in regards to uh the technology that we're building with like ai it makes me wonder if there's ways to uh code these patterns of integrity into the systems that we're building out technologically so that they spontaneously generate artifacts of life support rather than being in fear that they're going to be the doomsday device. Actually, no, they're coded with these patterns of integrity and those patterns of integrity always fold in as omniconsiderate packets of uh, information. And so I think, um, yeah, that's one one interest of mine is how to create these uh, um, these tools for designers to be able to apply it in in easy and spontaneous ways. I don't know if that answers your question, but you know, I don't have a lot of experience in looking into neurology. But thank you, thank you very much. I mean, I think I think. Um, you know, the, the great thing about this is that all of us do what we can, you yeah. know, whatever it is that we are able to do, we can do. So if Joe, you want to do neurology, go right ahead. <laughs> there is, there is really nothing stopping you, Joe. There is a great, so fine. I mean, I think, I think this is what we do. You know, all of us have some understanding, all of us have some skills. And as Bucky is saying, you know, if you see a problem, then it's yours. You know, go do it. And it all builds on itself. And what happens is that some problems that one person considers important, another person may not consider as important. So the great thing about this, this is about synergetic principles. This is about synergy. So each person goes and does some things in a principled way, according to the basic principles of how life is put together. And when you do that, they all mesh together. So I always, whenever somebody says, you know, would you like, how about, I would like, why don't you do this meetup? So my always the answer is, why don't you do it? It's all yours, you know? So, and that that's the thing about work. You know, that's the thing about kind of building this up and it actually naturally flows together. Uh, thank you. Uh, next up is going to be Paul followed by Rupali, Paul. Yeah, um, thank you so much, everyone. And Casey, as always, it was very, I learned a lot about how to present things from the way you presented. So um, I would like to propose building on what uh, Jeannie said, as well as some things Kirby and Richard said, um, we probably want to start by recognizing what did make it out there. Bucky was not a minor figure. I was a kid going to Expo 67. I saw the geodesic dome. You know, he had 48 doctorates. He was, but so a certain set of ideas, people championed, they worked hard, he made partnerships and they got out there. So some of his things are household words now. So um, 
let's recognize that. And then there's this subset, like Kirby was aggravated. The tetrahedron didn't, didn't get out there. That's like a poor stepchild, for instance, and some other basic principles. And uh, so when we're grappling with that, I want to make a parallel for us all to think about and put on your website designer kind of marketing. I know how to get an idea out there hat, Casey, because I want to propose that Einstein developed the theory of relativity in the early 1900s. A lot came out of it in spite of his statement to Bucky that it had no practical application. And But my point is, a weird thing happened in the last decade, roughly. I'm a therapist. I'm in the field of psychology. I'm very interested in mapping concepts onto Western psychotherapeutic models and getting a synergy of the whole being greater than the sum of the parts, as you referred to earlier. Shukan, I sent you mail about that today. Um, I didn't mention as much about Buckminster Fuller as I should have, but my it's in there, Srikant, know that. But my, um, my point about this is in the last decade, everyone knows about Schroeder, Schrodinger's cat. Everyone knows about the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Somehow, guys like Stephen Hawking uh, did this mapping of very complicated theories of relativity. Everyone knows about who tor how two particles accept, like influence themselves. And it all got into the popular dialogue in the last 10 years. I, I'm not saying I know the answer, but I'm suggesting, how did that happen? One answer is that people started mapping concepts onto known paradigms and problems that need solving, like why I'm depressed, or, or uh, a big one we could latch on to as a group here, we have a mission. Let's get some more ideas out there that got not looked at. Climate change. Now is a perfect time to write the book of how Bucky, Bucky solved that problem long before it even was known as a problem. I'm just giving examples from a sort of a marketing perspective Note what already made it out there, it's kind of too late. Synergy is a household word. It's a household word. You know, they've seen the geodesic dome, but like to get at the complex issues of the, of the true natural principles that are reflected and the packing of spheres and things, let's latch on to a current problem and map the concepts. That's all I have, thank you. Hmm. Thank you, Paul. Uh, Casey, would you like to respond? Yeah. So. I, you know, I think there's a multitude of reasons why certain ideas get disseminated. And I think one of them is because there's practical application and people find, you know, context for it in their design uh, needs. Another reason is also money because it's profitable. And so like uh, my thought with that, you know, it depends on what the objectives of the people applying the technology or the science are. And I think what sciences get explored and which ones get neglected has to do with the priorities of the people doing the funding of the ex exploring. And so in that regard, you know, I think, you know, Bucky had uh, quite a few ideas that never really took off, you know, like the Dymaxion car and Dymaxion house and all of these things. And maybe there was an air of, um, he hadn't built his credibility enough to the point uh, that it needed to be in order for some of his ideas to really uh, take root in a scientific community. Um, you know, I think also there is something to be said about the gestation period of ideas. And I think that, you know, sometimes there are these glimpses into a world that we're not ready for yet, uh, that kind of just take a moment to really land and, and until the need is really uh, glaring, like you said, with, you know, these environmental challenges that we face or, uh, we have the technology to apply them in good ways, such as what I was speaking to about the geoscope. You know, Bucky wanted to build a, a 
giant sphere in the New York Harbor that it was like this thing that people could walk up and like computer control. And, you know, I don't think he really imagined that each one of us has a phone in our pockets now that we can view the movement of world data, like in the palm of our hands. And so how to, uh, you know, I think these ideas have a more easy application now and a more broader reaching application um uh you know a soft a software solution to a, a lot of these uh and so i i like i said in my presentation i believe that synergetics one and two is two of the most important books of the 20th century and i think that the work has such important keys for humanity that i believe uh once people get a glimpse of the importance, it's going to catch like wildfire. I think he didn't have, he did the important work of writing calculus, for example, like, you know, the person who invented, I, I don't know much about the history of calculus, but, uh, you know, the person who invented calculus maybe didn't have the scope of how it was going to be applied. And just as, you know, Bucky created synergetics as this dry, blueprint of what is to come and it's us as designers whose job it is to make that beautiful for the onboarding of our whole species <laughs> thank you thank you casey um what i would say is that it's you know these network effects are almost are very very difficult to predict you know these giant networks and you can kind of talk about it in hindsight you know saying oh this one succeeded why but there were like thousand things at that time out of which one or two a few very few succeeded so it is difficult to tell so the question is what go ahead uh Casey. so sorry sorry to cut you off i also the you know the other consideration is bucky if you read grunch of giants uh his last book uh it in there he is very, uh, I mean, he speaks of the industrial, military industrial complex and kind of the systems as they are with a very critical eye. And so he's talking about, you know, these government institutions and the, the system as it is in a way that maybe isn't favorable to funding, <laughs> isn't favorable to spreading the ideas in a way that, uh, is going to fit into the culture as it is. And so he was very counterculture in a lot of ways. He was very uh, critical of the zeitgeist uh, as uh, we bombed ourselves into extinction kind of momentum. Thank you, Casey. So, so the point I'm making is that, you know, firstly, it is difficult to predict what ideas take off when. Secondly, it is actually very ideas which are considered completely out there actually succeed actually mm. succeed at, at times okay so then question is what do you do okay so first is that you really need to be authentic okay you really need to have some connection with nature with reality and you should have something to say and you have to produce something in massive quantity like bucket did okay you just produce as much as you can use everything now if you think that oh it's just a marketing trick no it's not like that because like how out of the thousand 990 of them are going to fail okay but it's a question of saying find something that is close enough to your heart so that you really want to do it you think personally think that this is of value then be honest with with your audience and try to speak in a, in a way that actually relates to them. And keep doing that, keep doing that, keep doing that. You don't know which of that is going to take off and when it is going to take off. Structure your life so that you will be able to do that across a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Or unfortunately for some of the great people that you think of, actually their work took off after they died. Van Gogh. Van Gogh, and it's just... Many, 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 many artists are like that in are in that category. And but it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. The, because what happens is that it's a question of what is under your control and what is not under your control. Producing great work from the depth of your being by 
looking, you know, and communing very deeply with the universe and with everything that is there, with the entire of humanity. That is something that you can do. And you can do a lot of it. We are in a really great situation with the level of prosperity that it is so easy to do. So Bucky is right. An individual can change the world. He is not special in that respect. Any human being can do that. But he has to be true to himself. He has to say, this is what I see and be able to produce that. Timing, et cetera, is, you know, it depends on the network. It depends on the synergetics and how, how the things work. That's, that's what I would say. Uh, thanks. Great question, uh, Paul. Next up is going to be Rupali uh, Bill. Uh, just a second. Go ahead, Rupali. Hi. I, uh, you know, just listening to Casey and his idea of the 24 modules for curriculum. I'm just very fascinated by that and eager to learn more. So I was going to propose, and I don't know, Shrikant, if it's okay for me to propose this um, as a set of 24 meetups and like unfold those um, ideas in the meetups. And maybe uh, that's one way to get them out there. And I'd be delighted, like I'd love to work with Casey um, mm. On, on helping get those uh, sure. modules. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Rupali. Uh, what, what I would say is, Casey, I, we really like, I, as you can see from everybody's uh, reaction, we really like what you're doing and whatever we can do in whatever way to, to uh, you know, accelerate what you're doing, we're happy to do that. We'll be able to find people who will collaborate with you. Uh, if you want to work on things jointly, happy to do that. So just, uh, you know, let's be in touch. Uh, just yeah. let me know what you would like to do. I, I don't see, I never tell people what they want, you know, what I want them to do. Because, mm -hmm. you know, it has to come from you. It has to yeah. do your entire life. It has to speak to the, to speak to your soul. Only those things are worth doing. Otherwise, it's not worth doing. Uh, all we're saying is that we, we you know, I, I echo Rupali's sentiment about, you know, we are happy to help in whatever way we can, whatever way makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, I really appreciate that. You know, I've been, uh, I feel like that's one of the more important aspects of my work is building the relationships part. You know, I will say that I, I am in um, contact uh, with some people about uh, how this work is going to evolve. And so I'm, in the midst of like maybe being unclear of how to involve other people at the moment as you know these new developments happen with it and i got to see what like <clears throat> how this is going to get picked up um so but i would love to be in touch and just absolutely. kind of explore how we can all absolutely wonderful next up is going to be bill genie and kirby bill Thanks. Um, Shri Khan, uh, can I screen share an image or two from Casey's website as a basis for what I'd like to say? Sure. Give me just a second. I'm going to make you a co-host. Go ahead. Okay. Um, is that visible? All right, it's coming up. Yes, there it is. Okay. This is from your website, Casey. Um, so, um, Maybe 30 or 40 minutes ago, Casey, you mentioned beauty and the role of beauty and the perception of beauty yeah. mm -hmm. um, as an influence on people's mentalities and motivations. Um, and uh, I wanted to put this item for your website up as a, a beautiful item. Um, and um, then there's this other uh, item Gosh, let's see. Uh, that that inspired my no, not that one. How about that? yeah, that one? Okay, so that's also from your website. So um, there seems to be someone meditating uh, in the middle, um, and it reminded me of this concept of a meditation mandala, which is like a poster on the wall, some kind of visual image that a meditator can do meditation with, doing open eyed meditation. Mm -hmm. um 
And uh, the reason I'm putting on the table the idea uh, in tonight's discussion, the idea of a meditation mandala is uh, because of what two previous participants mentioned. I think it was Kirby, correct me if I'm wrong, but Kirby talked about a distinction between the engineering uh, STEM discipline way of thinking, you know, linear, analytical, um, disaggregative. And on, on the other hand, the more humanities, holistic, Bucky, you know, comprehensivity way of thinking. Um, neuroscientists uh, uh, have also distinguished between left brain thinking, which is the engineering and the right brain thinking, which is, is more about shapes and smells and memories and emotions. And then Joseph tonight also mentioned neurology. So, um, you know, with respect to to the idea of a meditation mandala, I just wanted to put that idea on the table and ask if you've, uh, given all the graphics you've produced, have you gotten into the role of meditation mandalas in meditation and the effect of certain shapes in a meditation mandala on the meditative process? Mm -hmm. uh, and if you could speak about that, that would be great. It's interesting because I've I've had a, a deep history in meditation practice, and uh, but I never never really considered the connection between meditation mandalas and synergetics. I mean, it makes total sense, you know, in regards to visualizing these patterns of integrity and letting those patterns of integrity. Uh, wash over us in a way that produces results that we that we wouldn't be able to predict so like uh, how can me visualizing myself as the center ball the me ball uh, in the mid in the closest packed spheres of my experience in my life and how can I visualize each of the events and the people and the things that are there and constellate them in these patterns of integrity and see this as a, a, a mandala of my life. I think that's a great consideration and uh, I am not really sure why I never really thought of that before. I think for myself, I, I uh, tend to have wanted to stick more in the academic uh, scholarly realm of synergetics in order to make it able to permeate into uh, schools. And uh, not that I want to stay away from uh, the, the metaphysical, because that's just as much... Bucky emphasized the importance of the physical and the metaphysical and the actual that the metaphysical uh, followed these same design principles and that uh, what we're seeing here in the physical world is just an inverted metaphysical tetrahedron. And so it's a tetrahedron that's passed through itself into existence in and out of existence. And so uh, in that regard, I, you know, Synergetics 1 and 2 is some of the most spiritual books I've ever read. And yet it's encased in this uh, scientific lens. Uh, and what I love about Bucky, though, is he's willing to explore these ideas through poetry and prose in a way that is like you're looking at a science book and yet you're reading the now hourglass. For those of you who haven't come across the now hourglass, you can look that up on uh, Google and hopefully they have an image of it because the way he wrote it, he wrote this poem that is in the shape of an hourglass. And, and so just things like that, where it's like, he's very right brained analytical, but he has this like very outside of the box, kind of ephemeral, un, like you can't put it into a, even a description as to what he's doing. Um, he, he, and, and I think that's why I feel like the work is so important is the, that he lives in the metaphysical and lives in these almost spiritual worlds in a way that uh, bridges our earth and sky. It 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 brings form to these principles that uh, that would otherwise go operating in our subconscious. And so, uh, yeah, and I I really think that. Um, uh, there's a lot of spiritual keys to be found in synergetics and Buck, Bucky's work in general. And so this idea of 
uh, meditation mandalas inspired by synergetics would be an interesting uh, exploration. Wonderful. Thank you. Next up is going to be Jeannie, Kirby, and uh, Stephen. Jeannie. Well, when I was talking, you know, bemoaning that uh, geometry isn't really taught in the school anymore and all that stuff. Well, CJ and I, when we were studying geometry, we ran into this little part about this guy who spent his life trying to make something like, I'm not sure about the number, but 107, you know, faceted uh, polygon, not even a polyhedra, just a polygon. He spent his life because, you know, at that time you had to bisect the angles and trisect the angles and, you know, and so he has his masterpiece that he finally managed to do it. And it's in some kind of uh, archive in a university. You know, nowadays, although kids don't learn geometry, you can go to um, an app or something on, you know, GIMP or something and, and make incredible geometric things even though you don't really understand the basic, you know, and you don't have to use a straight edge and a compass anymore. It's, it's different. It's just different. And, um, you know, so in a way, and perhaps I'm saying just what you've already said, you know, that maybe let's skip the human beings and just go straight to embedding this in AI and, and technology, you know, maybe maybe we humans don't even, you know, maybe we can understand synergetics. Maybe we don't need to. Maybe if it's embedded for us as a tool, we can use it in ways that, you know, would be quite astounding. Just saying. Yeah. Yes. You know, I agree in, in one sense. And I also feel like synergetics is also a practice that brings us greater into greater touch with our humanity and our involvement in the cosmos, that it's not, uh, I see the way forward to the utopia that I imagine as uh, us uh, being fully sovereign in control of our uh, participation here as in instead of forfeiting all of our design and all of our participation to computers or AI, it's like, how can these tools actually bring us into greater touch with how I interact with my community and with uh, my art and with the people around me? And yeah, there's going to be a many ways in which people don't understand how to interface or interact with it. And it's up to designers uh, to distill these into the most easy onboarding applications for people to like apply in their own lives. And so there's going to be things that arise from designers playing with this that will create results that none of us can even imagine right now where, uh, it will be an application of design principles and synergetics in ways that like doesn't even look the same, isn't even in the same ballpark as what we're talking about right now. Uh, and uh, yeah, and so uh, for me, it's this like uh, living, breathing thing, a yes and where yes, yes, we inform our uh, AI and, and our technology, like imbue them with these integrity principles and also have this personal process of aligning ourselves to the integrity principles of the universe so that every decision I make and every relationship I have is of integrity. Wonderful. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Casey. That was great. Uh, next up is Kirby, followed by Stephen and Mona. Kirby. I, I will uh, say I have to pee really bad. Sure. Uh, <laughs> so. I, I have an interpretive dance here to, to keep people. Uh, so please take your time. Uh, so folks, um, what we're going to do, uh, please go ahead. Uh, yeah. um, so uh, so folks, uh, I mean, this, is, this has been something because I, I really love the level of comments um level of just just the interaction here and you know Casey's doing something really amazing and I like the scope of his you know what he's doing I like this connection between the metaphysical and the physical I like the connection between the aesthetic and the geometry um one of the I want to build on one of the points that Casey was making that really the secret of 
Bucky is being able to go from metaphysical to physical, you know, to move very gently and naturally from the physical things to the deepest principles underlying underlying it. And it, that is the reason why you can make things flow because you're always keeping an eye. You know, his idea of saying you design and at the end of it, if it is not beautiful, because the beauty, what happens is that we've got a very large brain and it notices the patterns, far more delicate kind of combination of patterns, far more, it is far more sensitive to integrities. So that feeling of beauty, that aesthetic experience is actually the same as an epistemological experience in some way of kind of getting saying, oh, this actually is coming from the same principle through and through. And that you can, you feel it, you know, aesthetically. So wonderful. Um, instead of uh, the interpretive dance, I decided to speak, uh, Casey. <laughs> but let's continue. Uh, let's go with Kirby, followed by uh, Stephen and Mona. Kirby. Yeah. Um, I just, I would, I just want to underline. I think of Fuller, like even when Maritza was touring and we checked out the Kubok de Edrin definition, it popped right up. I noticed in that definition, in Bucky's own words, he says some things about. But the, in the old days when they weren't energy sensitive or something, he puts a little jab in there. He's always throughout synergetics critiquing. Um, you know, he's trying to make space for his own thinking. And therefore, you could say he picks a fight with a lot of people. And I consider him an arch contrarian. I consider him a troublemaker. I consider him a disruptor. And I think when you see how disruptive it really would be, for example, to talk about America's greatest futurist in just elementary school and introduce his ideas about polyhedrons, it would be so different from what we teach today. And I have to see it. It's just, I have to see that there's huge pushback. Keeping Fuller in his place is something that takes a lot of energy and a lot of people have to participate. And one way is to always talk about what a failure he was. He tried to give us this three-wheeled car, but blah, blah, and then the house and blah, blah. And poor slob Bucky, I call it. That's the meme out there, where when people write about Bucky, it's all these viol violins. Poor guy. He tried so hard. He couldn't really do it. You know, I think they're... I think he was amazingly successful because this is what he was telling us is that if you really make working for humanity your goal and you put your mind to it, you're going to have amazing experience in an adventurous life. And that's what he had. I think it was very, very successful. And they also want to make him just a popularizer of the dome and all the things he did. He, he got his ideas from other people, Kenneth Snelson, all this kind of stuff. So I just want to say, oh, and like uh, over on the trim tab group, I think it was Maurice who dug up Fuller's FBI file or whatever, like they came knocking at his door because he was very friendly with all these quote unquote enemies and this whole thing about living re versus weaponry. He was somewhat threatening in that he refused to like, okay, well now when we get right down to it, it's really this superpower against that one, isn't it, Bucky? Like, you're really on our side and not their side, aren't you, Bucky? And he's like, no, I'm on the side of humanity here. And what does that really look like? I think he was a subversive. And the stuff he wrote in Operating Manual, I know you guys have read tons of stuff. You already know all this. So I'm already telling you stuff you know. But when he picks a fight with over-specialization, he says, you know, the greatest risk to our getting somewhere is that we're all so specialized. And now it's always somebody else's problem how to fix it because I'm just a specialist. What do I know about government? What do I know about this? What do I know about that? The people in charge need to fix things. And we're like, we'll elect the right people next time. And this looking up to politicians as if they're supposed to solve something, as if the president is supposed to fix something. And we're all like, oh, who's gonna be the next president? To me, this is juvenile, juvenile thinking and Fuller is here to help us grow up a little bit I think 
And that just makes him very subversive. And I just want to put in my two cents that the world makes more sense when you realize that Bucky is not just a good guy that didn't quite succeed. He's an active subversive who's being actively fought. And then you will understand better what's going on. Kirby, thank you so much. Casey, would you like to add anything? Yeah, I mean, I totally agree in that the way that he, uh, like I said before, he critiqued and provided like pushback against the military industrial complex and the world as it is, I can't imagine was uh, too easy for certain people to really understand or grok. <laughs> but the he has some of the most uh, beautifully comprehensive, subversive uh, ways of bringing down uh, a system or transitioning into a new system that I've ever come across. Like his his approach to it is uh, fascinating. If any of you haven't encountered it, uh, Kirby, I you know I really want to thank you for saying what you did, um, because. See, I think our standards of saying, of thinking about people are all, all wrong. You know, it is, you know, we look at kind of effects and we are saying, okay, this particular effect, what, what did he do? How much money did he make? Or how, it's like some specific thing that most people look at. And that's not actually who we are as human beings. I mean, him doing his work in a fully authentic way, you know, saying that, okay, I'm going to only speak what I see is truth. No, saying, you know, writing the Lord's Prayer every day. Okay, of basically your connection to the universe, asserting that, speaking of that in these interminable conferences you know just talk for 14 hours on that that is actually living that is actually living and an individual like that an authentic individual trying to grapple with the problems of his day regardless of whether it is Bucky or anybody else is usually opposed by a whole bunch of people who really are benefiting from the problems as they exist yeah. So it is very natural for there to be. And it's being authentic inevitably is subversive in so many in, in many different ways because you're going back to the root and you're speaking from the root. And everybody who is trying to prevent people from doing that or are trying to benefit from whatever has already been created with all its faults and just benefit from that, you're going to be up against them because you're going back to the roots and trying to rework everything. So to me, you know, everything that Bucky went through, you know, and, and this is not unusual, like Bucky himself would say, he would wear that as a badge of honor that I was a human being. And that's the best thing you can say. I think most, most of us, most people, are not you know we take shortcuts we say oh i have to do this so i will cut down on my integrity i will i will do this i will bear with this falsehood i will not expose this fraud i will be you know nice i will not ruffle you know feathers or rock the boat and there is no way of being a you authentic human being without being prepared to do that. And that's what he was there. And so the impact that he had on people, it's actually very difficult to see, but it's very real. You know, those of you who have talked about listening to Bucky and how it influenced, for every one of you who has done that, I'm sure there are hundreds who actually picked up that courage to live their own lives from Bucky. And that is so great an addition, such great success for a human being that it cannot be compared. So um, Kirby, thank you. Thank you so much for, for bringing that up. Uh, next up is Stephen followed by Mona. Stephen. 
Thank you. Um, so what what's coming to mind with all of these different conversations about there's the physical and the metaphysical, the I've just been kind of listing all the different things that have been, been coming up, the individual versus the collective, the specialist versus the generalist, geometry of thinking or the gravity, the metaphysical, um, universe and meditation, part and synergy. What Bucky seems to be getting at is that we keep on taking things apart without seeing the whole. And um, what I wanted to bring up was, it's interesting how, Casey, you're working on the the geometry side of things, creating the diagrams of those physical things. And I've been spending the last uh, year and a half working with Veronica Anderson, where she's going, okay, let's go into the metaphysical, let's go into meditation, um, figure out how that connects to the body and then to the, the larger universe that we're a part of. And so it'd be interesting to take, you know, we were looking at that um, six around one mandala with the meditator in the middle. And that's exactly the calendar that I've created for myself is a meditation practice that that looks exactly like that. So it would be yeah. interesting to actually merge what we're doing. <laughs> well, so funny that you say that. <clears throat> I've created a kind of uh, planners for myself where I plan out my uh, days uh, with these um, geometry i do six around one and then i put in yeah. like the tasks i want to do and then i color them in when i complete them and so i i've been playing around <laughs> with doing little interfaces like that as well of like how to visualize uh certain things like that <laughs> yeah that's really interesting um so I've, I've dropped some links in the chat and um if you want to take a look at it it's pretty similar it's pretty funny Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Next up is Mona and uh, Bill. Mona. Yes, thank you. Um, I just wanted to say I noticed in your presentation when you talked about integrity, I was actually waiting for, for you to bring it up. And I saw you display that, um, that image. I, I made that same thing myself with rubber bands and sticks. And um, it was just something tremendous that happened when I put it together. Like it took me a while to kind of put it together. Um, and I just got shivers all over my body. It's like, I could feel it in my body. Oh my gosh, I did something right. And it wasn't like me. Right. But I did, I recognized the pattern uh, in a way that was very meaningful to me. And I was thinking about that during your presentation, talking about like art and how art can impact um, but just like actually touching it and doing it yourself yeah. is just so powerful that I can't, yeah, yeah. But, you know, like really, and then it made me think like about all the patterns that I'm becoming aware of, like, how do you even know that is a fundamental pattern? But once you start recognizing it everywhere, it, mm -hmm. it just begins to dawn on you. Like, oh my gosh, it's everywhere. Yeah. Um, and then it doesn't necessarily play out right away, like in a, in a concrete way, but everything is different after that. Like mm. you can't pretend not to notice. Yeah. So I think it, you, you make a wonderful thing by, by making it sort of like ra raising awareness, like, okay, here's what it is. <laughs> and here's how you can feel it. Like touch it, touch it, yeah. you know, you will feel it like, cause something in your body that's fundamental will wake up to it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And, and then you will feel it. Like you, you won't be able to just kind of look away. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to, to, to thank, you, thank you and mention the, the tensegrity. I've been showing it to my, I'm a math professor, by the way. <laughs> my, my, my students don't want to hear about this stuff. They always worry about the exams, but um, is this going to be on the exams? Like, no, no, no. <laughs> but um, I am a big fan of making things with my hands, like say, with fiber, I've, uh, fiber projects where I 
say crochet and I make like say Mobius strip or, you know, Klein bottle or all these things. Like I, I see this tremendous value in touching things and making, seeing it in my hands that it's there. <laughs> it's just unbelievable. So I wanted to thank you. So that's one thing that I wanted uh, that I maybe didn't touch upon as much as I should have is uh, the importance of these physical models and toys and things that get people in touch with these design principles, the, the feeling of integrity, the feeling of, you know, you can read about, uh, this is what Bucky uh, uh, called the jitterbug. And this is a toy you can buy online uh, called the Vex Vector Flexor. And, uh, but he saw this as an important uh, example of intertransformability and how you have the cube octahedron here that collapses into an icosahedron that then collapses into an octahedron that then collapses into a tetrahedron and uh this this toy just in playing with that i you know i read about it in the book but it wasn't until i played with it in my hands that you can feel this like there's something at play here that uh is you know, it's collapsing into a state of omnitriangulation and to where it, it you know, so I, I, I feel this, the, the principles of integrity in operation in this. And, you know, likewise playing with like uh, actual spheres and packing them or, or you see oranges in a grocery store stacked and closest packing of spheres. And so, yeah, bringing people into greater touch with these, uh, toys and physical objects that get us a tangible feeling of what integrity feels like, I think is like a really important part of it all. And I actually want to do more of it myself. There's people like uh, Graham Forscott, who uh, has created these paper geometric models. Some people like he makes incredible paper geometric models. And I'd love to get into more of that kind of stuff, making making these little models oh. of the stuff. Casey, can you put the name of what you just showed us in the chat? Because I really need to buy that. Yeah, it's called a... It's out of stock. I've been stocking it forever. Okay, but put it put it in this one. I will compete with Maritza to get the one as soon as it becomes available. Oh, whoops. I just sent that in a private message to Richard. All right. Uh, next up is going to be Bill. Bill, go ahead. Thanks. Um, I want to draw some connections between two things you said, Casey, and then something that uh, Stephen said. Uh, just your last comment, Casey, was about that nested structure that you demonstrated with that object, uh, the nesting structure from tetrahedrons into higher level structures and back and forth. And then maybe 20 minutes ago, you mentioned, um, I think in response to my previous comment, you mentioned the word alignment and how you, in your own meditation practice, uh, seek alignment of various elements and components. Um, and the word that occurred to me as a synonym of, of alignment uh, is congruence. Um, and so, uh, and then um, Stephen talked about, uh, you know, the distinction between external design and construction on one hand and internal design and construction on the other hand, although he didn't use those those words, those will be my words, but uh, I, I want to put on the table uh, an analogy or metaphor or two uh, to to open up. Bill, just try to keep it uh, brief. That's it, because we are, we are kind of running out of time. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, new ways of thinking about parallelisms between the external design and construction process and the internal design and construction process through meditation. Externally, I, I, I would guess that when uh, the original drawings of geodesic domes were looked at by architects and engineering, uh, architectural engineers, it changed their way of thinking about design, which led them to change the designs they made uh, and the designs that were constructed. And it's kind of like um, an overhead projector back in the day when I was going to K-12 school in the 70s and 80s, where you'd have a transparency through which light would go in the classroom and it would project what was on the transparency onto the wall. It's like those drawings were like a transparency and they looked at it and it changed what occurred on their internal wall of design imagination. And and similar with um, meditation practice, you know, mandala on the wall or, or words in a poem um, can be like a 
a transparency that changes what happens between sense data coming into a meditator's body and mind and uh, then what happens thereafter with thoughts, feelings, body sensations, impulses, and finally actions. The idea being there's more than one way for a particular batch of sense data to get to go from coming in to going out of the system through actions. Um, and uh, the last point I'll make is is um, the idea of, well, I, I should probably save this for next time, the next time this conversation comes up, because it's a kind of subtle idea, the idea of um, congruency and moving an existing set of structures closer to more congruence with the underlying laws of nature. Uh, be it laws of gravity on, and hydrology on the outside or laws of neurology on the inside and how these uh, these um, transparencies can can move something towards closer congruence uh, because the transparency itself has latched onto something about the underlying driving factors, the for the laws of physics, et cetera, that are captured in that transparency that moves the the structure at time one. Uh, closer to get to closer congruence and and the, so the question is how do you get the transparencies written right okay thanks for listening so what this reminds me of uh is a quote from buckminster fuller that i've actually had a hard i haven't been able to find it again and i remember reading it you know at this point maybe i made it up but it sound it sounds really good in my head and i'm almost positive i read him write this but he said that when we stop acting on behalf of of our own self-interest. And when we start acting on behalf of all living beings, we have the immune system of the cosmos being enacted through us. Like we're connected to a greater system that has an, an immune system of its own. And so like what you're saying is like the more that we as individuals embody these integrity principles and make relationships that exhibit these integrity principles, the more that these greater uh, ideas, these bigger structures start to come to earth, they they start, the, the immune system starts to pump into the local satellite, like the, the transmitters of this greater uh, uh, systemic health that is already in operation and it exponentially grows in its influence because once once you know I, and this is kind of what i wanted to say before to the previous question is like once people get an idea of the truth of how we're all connected and the truth of how suffering in one part of the system ripples into unexpected parts of the system that power power over and weaponry can only give you access to a limited piece of the grand reservoir of wealth that's actually available to us once that starts to you know awaken in people you know these greater you know the templates the overlays that we can see in these uh in any arena that we turn our attention to will become more clear and the results will become more unpredictable because there's this uh there's something in operation beyond any single one of us and any single one of our explorations start you know it starts to get into the greater context that we have no concept for from these limited perspectives as individuals and so i think i get i get, have solace in this knowing that uh, there is a personal, uh, a greater cosmic personality that's arising that is not in control of, uh, none, none of us are in control of, that uh, we can sort of direct the, as trim tabs, kind of the, the impetus for these greater energies to come to earth, but what's happening on a grander scale has, an, has a personality that uh, transcends any one of us. Um, so I don't, it, I hope that kind of yes. answered that a little bit. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Casey. Folks, now is your chance to talk about what do you think of this meetup? You get only between one sentence to three sentences, just very brief. You know, I, I thought this was just amazing meetup, but I first want to hear you. Uh, what did you think between one sentence to three sentence? What did you think? 
of the meetup. What did you get from the meetup? Just go ahead and type an exclamation mark to, I would love to hear from as many of you as possible because it's really, truly, truly amazing meetup. But I want to, I want people to put it in their own words. So go ahead and type an exclamation mark or raise your hand in Zoom to say one to three sentences on what did you think of this meetup? What did you get from it? We're going to start with Joe followed by Maritza. Joe, what did you get? Um, got quite a bit. I mean, I think the thing that you're uh, doing very well, Crazy, is that you're actually making Buckman Circular's ideas accessible. That's one of the goals here. So this is a great platform for that. And I think that uh, ultimately some of the work that you do with you know, Stroopy and others uh, is actually going to really just push a lot of your ideas forward. Uh, and I think it's going to be a, a successful project. So I look forward to seeing uh, what you uh, do in the future. Thank Hopefully you. you'll come back. Thank you, Joe. Uh, next up is Maritza followed by Steven. Folks would love to hear from as many of you as possible. What did you, what did you think of the meetup? What did you get? Maritza. We'll say something that stands out the most here is the modernity that you bring to Buckminster Fuller. You know, this your your website looks fresh, it looks new, it's very clear, very precise. Um, and that takes away from the thinking process that, you know, Bucky ideas are old or that they're stale. You know, it looks new and fresh. And so I, I think that that's an amazing um presentation for this work. It it immediately makes people more willing to digest it, as it were. Um, also, I love that one of your four paths is um, heavily including the art aspect of it. Um, I haven't seen as much of a focus on that. And I think that that's a beautiful connector for so many of the ideas that we've seen across a variety of um, different uh, persons who've spoken to us here. Thank you. Thank you, Marissa. Folks, what did you think of the meetup and what did you get from it? Next up is going to be Stephen, Richard, and Kirby. Stephen. I felt like what you're working on really embodies that whole comprehensive anticipatory design science. To me, that is like it's universal, it's particular, it's metaphysical, and it's physical all at the same time. So um yeah i just felt the synergy of it all and and how it just feels like in this group there's there's enough synergy <laughs> to actually make this happen wonderful next up is richard followed by kirby anybody else wants to share go ahead and type an exclamation mark richard <clears throat> well again thank you uh, casey i want to go back to <clears throat> the quote from humans in universe that um Bucky also said that he does not create anything. Uh, he he used the language of conceptualization, conceptual realizations, uh, turning things into applied action. I just think you are, are really onto that. And whether you stop at conceptual realizations or also uh, bring it into um, practical applications, I think uh, you're on a road that I wish uh, we could get many, many more uh, traveling on it. Um, my my mission was I didn't really start out that way, but was a a social tensegrity uh, application to see whether or not uh, uh, the geometric models that I was learning about could be uh, applied in a suicide uh, safer living uh, context. And it's been a 40 year journey, uh, but it's worth it all the way along. And so I encourage you to stay on your journey and uh, continue with it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Uh, next up is going to be Kirby and Paul. And I'm going to give final word to Casey about what he got from this meetup. OK, uh, so uh, Kirby, followed by Paul. Kirby. Yeah, I'll be brief. I just really appreciate this context of you guys have been studying all kinds of Bucky stuff. You've probably overtaken trim tab because you meet way more often. And plus you're dabbling in all these neighbor neighboring topics. And anyway, I just have high respect for the context you guys have created for 50 in 52 living ideas, just for nurturing 
a Bucky aware uh, sensibility. And I think to have someone like Casey drop into the middle of it like this and show us all these graphics, it's, it's a fruitful environment beyond anything any one of us could create that we've all created together. I really appreciate that. It's really great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Kirby. And you've been a part of that, uh, creating this. Um, next up is going to be Paul. Paul, go ahead. What did you uh, What did you get from the meetup? What are you walking away with? Yeah, I feel it's an inspiring feeling that we can all have from what you've done here. And I think you're uniquely positioned, not only because of what you talked to us about, but all those other projects. I watched your video, one of your videos about ancient uh, civilization with some PhD guy you were interviewing. It was it was really good. I could see your passion about that. So this can also hook to that. I think you're really uniquely positioned with all your skills and interests and all the projects you're doing and your authentic desire that transcends marketing, but you're still trying to reach people with a message and you've got the skills. So I'm glad. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, Casey, how was how was the meetup? What 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 did, what did you get? I mean, I got a lot. Uh, one of the biggest, I think, is just building my chops and presenting this stuff. It's not often that I present this to other people, and so uh, getting getting better at articulating it in a clear way. It's still a lot for me to like. It's a big challenge for me to be able to articulate it. Uh, so this is good exercise in that. Uh, also, to find you know people who are interested in this, it gives me hope. Uh, as I continue this work, that there's actually people who are interested in this work and that it will have uh, people interested once I am ready to offer it at a you know higher level. Um, so yeah, I, I feel like I've gained a lot of uh, confidence in, after this whole experience and being able to lead people through the process and that I've gone through and then hopefully inspire. Uh, new designers to undertake this mission. Wonderful. Um, so I, I thought that this was just incredible. Um, you know, it clearly shows that, you know, this is something that is a core passion of yours and you're able to do it pretty much on your own. You know, you know you've taken it this far, uh, largely by yourself, which is just amazing. And um, so I look forward to working with you, um, you know, uh, you put your contact information. Hopefully, you will get some people contacting you through this. The video will be up there. On I the don't think I put my email address in the chat, but uh, oh, you can contact me through my website uh, under the contact tab. If you just go to my website and then go to contact. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, and, um, you know, the YouTube video will be there forever. So you will have that. Plus, you have a standing invitation. Anytime you want to come and present anything or you want to try out anything, we are completely fine with experimentation. So if you want to do something, you're welcome to do that. It could be as small a topic or as large a topic. It doesn't matter. So you have a standing invitation. Uh, so really, I'm, I'm, I'm honored to have you here. So thank you so much. Yeah, and, and thank you. And uh, one last thing is like, I, I want to... Uh, kind of put a postscript on there that this is just the tip of the iceberg of the amount of work I've done in regards to all this, that this is kind of uh, what I could distill down into. I mean, I just put this presentation together over the last week. And so this is like, you know, the least, the minimum viable product. This, uh, I have so much more to share in regards to all of this. And I look forward to, to, having you all there with me along the way. So thank, thank you. you. Now, next week, we're going to have Kirby. Kirby, could you give a short preview of what we are planning to do? Yeah, for my presentation, I'm going to tour um, stuff I've done with kids sometimes, like the, the prototyping I've done of a curriculum, um, which is different age levels, but pre-college, you could say. So things I've done in the past, and also just I'll be available to answer more questions about the geometry and stuff. Wonderful. All right, folks. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon.
by everybody. Uh, again, I'm I'm just so amazed by the quality of people who come, the the questions, the comments. I mean, it's just incredible. Uh, you know, all of us are learning so much. And thank you, thank you, Casey. Bye.